On the morning of October 7th, more than a thousand fighters from Hamas broke through the 20-foot-high barrier that has long separated Israel from Gaza's civilians and the militants of Hamas. A billion-dollar upgrade in 2021 outfitted the barrier with what Israel said were cutting-edge surveillance tools, a deep underground concrete layer to block Hamas tunnels, and remote control machine guns above ground. Israeli officials hailed the new wall. The surprise attack on October 7th was the deadliest single assault in Israel's history. Israel's government has pledged to investigate the catastrophe, which many security analysts have rated the nation's worst intelligence failure. We didn't believe that Hamas had this capability, and so we didn't see it coming. So how and why did Israel's vaunted defenses fail, allowing Hamas to pull off its shocking assault? To answer that question, the Washington Post analyzed hundreds of videos and photos posted on social media, including visuals of the attack and the preparations that preceded it. We examined maps and planning documents recovered from slain Hamas fighters, reviewed videos and audio recorded by militants' body cams and Israeli security cameras, and spoke to witnesses. Our reconstruction shows how Hamas fighters quickly neutralized key parts of the so-called Iron Wall, exploiting vulnerabilities created by Israel's dependence on technology and remotely monitored surveillance equipment. Videos of militants training to attack mock-ups of Israeli compounds had been posted to social media months earlier and were visible to all. We took the visual evidence from October 7th and mapped it across southern Israel and inside the Gaza Strip. We used the position of the sun to estimate when key events occurred. We located footage from 14 breaches determining where they occurred, from the Erez crossing in the north to Kerem Shalom in the south. Israel says there were around 30 breaches in all. Dawn, around 6.15 a.m., fighters set off from Gaza. People along the road cheer them on. As fighters make their way to the fence, Hamas begins firing a barrage of rockets at targets across the barrier around 6.30 a.m. Israeli officials say more than 3,000 rockets were fired in total and were likely intended to distract their troops. Israelis are observing a week-long religious holiday. The country's military has recently been shifting troops to the West Bank amid growing unrest. Text messages between residents of one kibbutz show their assumption that the rockets are a routine irritant rather than anything more serious. In one video, Hamas reconnaissance fighters paraglide over the barrier, under the cover of the rockets. Training videos posted to social media after the attack show that militants had been practicing that and other tactics they used to breach the fence. They had also been expanding their training camps, activity that was visible in widely available online maps. The evidence of militants being trained and armed was largely ignored or dismissed, experts said. After the initial rocket barrage, Hamas soon transitions to the next stage of the operation. Sever the connections that link Israel's surveillance and security system. Inside the group, it is known as the blinding plan. Israel's visibility of the fence was already partially reduced, because three of the seven surveillance balloons used to monitor hotspots along the Gaza fence were not in operation. These Skystar balloons carry a long-range, 360-degree camera. The cameras on the three balloons needed maintenance, but the model that Israel uses is relatively old and is no longer made. On the morning of October 7th, militants cut one of the balloons loose, causing it to float away. 
Along with the balloon, Hamas videos capture attacks on at least seven critical surveillance and weapons towers along the fence. How did Hamas know where to hit? Analysts said Hamas may have spent years collecting intelligence about Israel's defenses. The militants used drones to gather data and elicited information from Gazan day laborers who had permits to enter Israel for work, Israeli intelligence officials said. Hamas really committed a very serious intelligence work. It was not a, you know, a, a general blind offensive. They knew exactly what, what are the points they want to attack. Hamas planning documents indicate that leaders had deep knowledge of the models of equipment used by Israel that they would need to overcome. Fighters also carried with them open source satellite imagery annotated with coded locations of key structures along the wall. One type of system noted in these maps and attacked on October 7th are surveillance towers. In this video from the day, an unmanned drone drops an explosive on one near Kibbutz Beri. Training videos recorded before the attack show fighters had practiced dropping explosives from inexpensive hexcopter drone models and launching fixed-wing Zuari suicide drones. Some of these towers house speed surveillance systems, which contain HD cameras, laser and infrared sensors, and radars, and can see people almost six miles away, according to the manufacturer. Each unit costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. In this document, Hamas specifically notes the locations of such speed surveillance systems. Visuals and other data from the towers are sent through hardwired cables to military outposts along the fence, notably facilities at Reim, Nachal Oz, and Urim. They are monitored 24 hours a day by Israeli personnel, according to security analysts. The former head of one of the firms that built the fence told the Post that without the towers and their sensors, Israeli visibility would be severely limited. The, the command center are disconnected uh, from the sensors and they are not able to give real-time indication what's going on uh, in the border in real time. When you are taking down the main communication towers, of course, some of them or all of them have backups. Uh, to my understanding, uh, most of the backups were taken as well. In addition to taking out surveillance towers, Hamas launches attacks on multiple sentry tech towers topped with Samson weapons stations, which feature machine guns and sensors. The towers are positioned every few hundred yards along the barrier and outside key military facilities, according to analysts and past reports. They are nicknamed Roe Yore, Hebrew for seas, fires. Once the sensors send intruder alerts, IDF personnel can fire the 50 caliber machine guns at targets by remote control. Israeli forces have used the towers to kill people it said were Hamas terrorists in past incidents. But on October 7, Hamas dropped incendiary explosives from drones, fired rocket-propelled grenades, and unleashed sniper fire at the towers, videos show. The full extent of the damage done to the weapons and electronic connections is not clear from the footage. Several of the towers are marked on maps recovered from Hamas fighters and first published by NBC News. The Post verified videos of at least two of the towers in these maps being attacked. This tower, located beside a reservoir at the fence near Kafar Azza, was attacked twice by Hamas drones. Improvised incendiary explosive devices with fuses were dropped on its camera and beneath its weapon system. Video released by Israel shows that in at least one instance, observation soldiers were able to use a weapons tower to disrupt a dozen or so Hamas fighters approaching the fence near Kisufin. Some Israeli tanks and armored vehicles were in positions to engage Hamas fighters, but videos show Hamas striking first with drones and rockets to take out these threats to its advance. The drone maneuver used on October 7th was well practiced, according to this training video filmed before the attack. Fighters carried documents containing three digit codes to use when discussing Israeli vehicles and details of expected vehicle response times. Recovered documents outlined what the group said were different spots on the Israeli Merkava tank that, if hit, would destroy the tank and other spots that would disable it. Several fighters carry anti-tank rocket-propelled grenades, which, according to this document, can be used to penetrate the armor of the Israeli tanks. As the sun begins to rise, trained fighters use a range of explosives and munitions to blow holes in the fence 
and concrete barriers in multiple locations. It takes them only minutes. In Berry, fighters are seen propping up an anti-tank mine beside the fence while they fix other explosives to the wire. Another team appears to detonate explosives through a so-called strip and frame charge, closely resembling a device seen in a Hamas training video filmed earlier. This is the breaching device. Following the attack, Israel said it had also recovered blocks of plastic explosives from Hamas casualties. By sunrise, around 6.40 a.m., in all 14 breach locations captured on video reviewed by The Post, Israel's defenses appear to have crumbled. Fighters stream through, some in vehicles, others on foot. Most do not come under fire. There is no sign of Israeli personnel. In these locations, the fence has failed. The first waves of what the Israeli government estimates will be 3,000 militants quickly pass through. The stage is set for a massacre. More than 1,200 Israelis were killed on October 7th, according to Israeli authorities, as militants overran military sites and kibbutzes and rampaged through a music festival. Around 240 were taken captive and brought back into Gaza, Israel said. Within hours, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu declared that Israel was at war. The Israeli retaliation has been catastrophic for Palestinian civilians. A bombing campaign and ground invasion of Gaza has so far killed more than 11,000 Palestinians, including more than 4,500 children, according to the Gaza Health Ministry. The death toll rises daily. The failure laid bare by the Hamas attack has set off furious recriminations inside Israel. Stunned Israelis are now demanding Netanyahu's resignation and accountability for their security establishment's failure.